All right, good morning, YouTube. So uh, we're gonna be working on the Civic today. I know usually I'm talking about the bike, but the car needs to get done because I've got a big road trip I'm going on and I'm driving it. So it's got a charging system issue that I'm trying to rectify here. No pun intended. Um, it's an issue with the alternator. I've got some printout of some of the flow chart and some of the things you need to do to diagnose this one. We're just going to go through and basically verify that none of the wiring's damaged and narrow it down to the alternator itself. This is like factory service manual type material. So um, normally I'm not like following instructions and I kind of fly by the cuff or something on this, but I have access to factory in instructions. So I'll use those. They work good. So um, got my pretty much the only tool I'm going to need is this flute and these instructions and then the best tool you have is your brain so I brought that with me I think we'll see so um, I hope I got you a good viewing angle I don't think it's gonna be the easiest thing in the world to see this alternator so uh, I got you on the suction cup mount so all I got to do is flip it down like that and you know you're looking at the alternator I can see it just fine from where you're at but um, this connector here this little green connector is let's see flashlight time so the alternator's hiding down in here and then this little connector here this is what we're working with for the most part and these instructions here Kind of give you a brief pin out right there of what the what the connector is and there's two terminals that we're going to be focused on there's a c terminal and an ig terminal the ig is a black and yellow it's ignition um and then there's c which is white and yellow and i believe that's like a charge sense circuit i'm not i can't remember exactly the definition for that one but uh normally i would know a little bit more about it if i was flying you know flying solo but we're just going to follow these instructions here. So basically, I know what this thing does. I, I've been looking at this issue for a little bit now, so I know what the symptoms are. It's really strange. The battery light will come on, and then sometimes if you rev it up, the battery light will turn off and until you get below a certain RPM, and then when you get back above a certain RPM, the battery light will turn back on, which doesn't make any sense. And the battery voltage is typically okay. Uh, the charging system voltage is typically pretty decent, but that's that light shouldn't be being on and off all the time so I need to uh, and I've noticed a degradation in, in charging system voltage so I think this alternator is going out that's my in my head pre-diagnosis but I haven't run any tests on it yet or at least not these kind of tests not this structured I've kind of probed around and looked at some stuff but didn't know if it was supposed to be that way if that was by design or by fault so First things first, it says start engine, allow to reach operating temperature, then stop. We're not going to do that because I just don't need to. I already know what it does. And this says disconnect electrical connector from alternator. Well, we already did that, so, so that's done. With ignition switch on, check for battery voltage between ground and alternator connector terminals, figure 10. If battery voltage is indicated, proceed to step 4. I believe it is. And we're going to recheck because that's something you need to do in these cases. Don't trust the last person that was here, even if it was you, because you might have tested it wrong. You might have plugged it into the wrong hole, or you might have got a reading last time you checked it out of a different hole. But now that you're looking at the pinout, you should just double check yourself to make sure. No harm in that. Uh, you're not calling yourself wrong, you're just verifying. So I've got to take my black lead here. I'm going to stick that in, well, really anything I can find that's a, that's a block ground that's going to hold on to the lead, which is a little bracket that fits snugly behind. She had an alligator lead to go on there. Alligator clip. So now we're going to probe. All right, so it gives you an idea of that. So we got the ignition on. I'm going to probe this this terminal here. All right, so I should have battery voltage. It says 11.55. So let's see what I got. That's the battery. 
11.65 so that's 0.10 volts different that's satisfactory I'm surprised this thing will start it will start right now at 11.6 that's low but it's an Optima battery so um, I don't know AGM batteries got some got some something going on in there where they can run on lower voltages so we do have battery voltage at IG which is good that means I don't have to trace down a wiring issue and then connect positive lead to battery positive terminal and negative lead to electrical connector terminal C all right we're just gonna keep everything hooked up the way it is it should say it'll give us a voltage either way so I should see battery voltage again on terminal C which is the upper the upper terminal here voltmeter positive okay well here's uh, here's a problem we should be receiving should be getting uh, battery voltage on this terminal here but I'm only getting 0 0.102 volts it does say connect the negative to it and connect the positive to the battery terminal so I'm gonna do that Maybe it's diode or something like that and it's not flowing power. It'd be kind of weird, but I'll just follow the instructions. Don't be lazy. Just follow the instructions, dummy. You don't have to be smarter than the instructions. If you were, you wouldn't be using them. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Connect voltmeter positively to battery positive terminal and negatively to negative alternator electrical connector terminal C. Oh, with all accessories off start engine and no voltmeter reading, that's why. I was like, I know I've seen power on that terminal before. I've got to uh, I've got to start it up, so. good so this is why you redo your tests because eventually you might find something you didn't want to see or something you did want to see that leads you to a better diagnosis so that is the C terminal which is the white and yellow I'm gonna have to go and look in the diagram here I believe that is actually I can probably google it really quick but I believe that is a that's that's a pin that is a pin on the computer. That is um it said if there is no voltage indicated, check for the following. You're looking for an open circuit and the white and yellow wire from the voltage regulator to the 
PFI electronic control unit, which is just like your engine ECU type thing. Um, they have their own names. It's a PFI because uh, you know, normally they say PGMFI on their intake manifold or whatever. So that's that's Honda's little computer designation. Computer designation is a PFI. PFI ECU. So and if the wiring is good, then it says PFI control unit may be defective. So um, I'm basically going to find this terminal and I'm gonna back probe the connector at the computer with the engine running and if I see battery voltage at the computer then I have a break in the wire and and then things get kind of fun so because then I have to go and find out where this wire is broken and all that fun stuff I wouldn't be surprised if something chewed through the wire because I've had that before on this car someone uh, someone uh, an animal chewed through my headlight harness on the passenger side so we'll see we'll see what happened there I may end up having to splice a wire in here if I can narrow it down to where the wire is broken at like if it's in one section of the harness just for simplicity's sake I uh, might I mean instead of like having to pull the intake manifold off of this and get the wiring harness out from under it and tear it all apart and find the break in the wire I may splice a a wire on the outside and, and tape it to the outside of the harness which still won't be particularly easy but um, that'll have to do so I gotta figure out what connector in this engine compartment has that wire after uh, it might just be a bad computer which would suck because this one's tuned and uh, my other computers not socketed so that would suck so hopefully that's not the case, but we're going to find out. i got to go figure out which terminal on the computer that white and yellow wire goes to. And then we're going to come back. We'll be under the dash, and we'll check that out. So, see you in a bit. Alright, so we're back. We're on the floor. Uh, you can see what I was saying before. It is tuned. Got an ostrich in here. Chip emulator. Got my Hue log for logging. But, with this being a modified computer, nothing that... I've done to tune it has it affected and you're gonna be all aghast because the computer's open but it's fine it's okay so I looked at I may have to reposition you so you can see what I'm seeing Let's see what I can do I don't know what I'm gonna be able to do All right, so there's a computer. Don't ignore this. Ignore this. That is uh, some, some wiring for my wide band that's kind of haphazardly put in place. So, what we're looking for is terminal B5. Bingo. Um, that is white with a yellow tracer, and that is for the alternator. So, the... I can't remember exactly how these are numbered, but this is the B connector here. So we're basically going to... That's what I was afraid of. Face plant. White with yellow, I believe, is this third one on the top, which would make sense because it's one, two, three, four, five. They go top, bottom, top, bottom, top. So, what I really need is some T-pens, and I don't know if I have any here. I might have to go find a safety pen or a needle or something, or a paper clip, maybe. I don't have any in my glove box. Actually, I just put my electrical diagnostics kit back in uh, its place. So, I'm going to go find something to back probe that with, and I'll be right back. Alright, so, a little paper clip. And, let's see if we can get this in this terminal here. So 
But the reason you want to back probe is because you really need a live reading of this. I'm gonna have to start the engine and do this, which I don't even think the engine will run with this B connector unplugged. But we're gonna go ahead and we're going to test this. See if there's battery voltage. Um, let me check and let me disconnect this connector and make sure it's disconnected. cigarette lighter. And I do not have battery voltage to that pin. I have 4.7 volts. So we have to figure out why that is. That doesn't seem right. I do have the factory ECU I could swap in here just to do another test. So the headlights are And do the high beams just for the, just for the heck of it. Might have to put this battery on a charger. Let's see. Did that change? It kind of did. It went to 4.5. It really shouldn't be showing anything with it disconnect. I don't. I'm not entirely sure how this system works because it has the. It has this uh, ELD system. You know, it's not just a regulator, internal or external. There's a load detector, which does some funky things, I believe. It's kind of a, kind of works differently from other systems. So I'm gonna have to go do a little bit of research about this and figure out why I'm getting a funky voltage there. Why I'm not getting full 12 volts. I might have to go get that other ECU just to note its behavior because I know that one was working. That one's a factory ECU and didn't have any issues so I may have to go swap that one in just to just to see. Hmm. I'm going to have to verify that that is the correct pin. That that is B5. I'm going to go check a factory diagram instead of this one I have in an app. That might be, might be wrong so I'm going to go do a little bit of research and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. I got some. I got a little bit more information here. Let's see. So I've got a connector view here, and it shows B5 as being the one I thought it was. And then I got a wiring diagram. And the confusing part is they give you like these just one-digit numbers, like C452 is the connector, and then they give you like three and 17 as the pin numbers. Well, that's not the Honda numbers, so. I had to kind of translate that, kind of look at the wire colors, and then reverse engineer their numbers there. So basically, these top numbers here on their numbers are B1 through B19, and it's all odds, and then all evens are on the bottom for Honda's numbers. Well, I had to translate that to it being the B connector, C452, and then 1 through 10s on the top, and 2 through 20s on the bottom, you know, evens and odds. So B5 is pin 3. So, the C terminal here, coming from the voltage regulator, is going to pin straight to pin 3 on the ECU. So, i got to figure out what this C210 connector is. I believe it's this large round connector on the underneath the hood here. I'll have to check and see if pin 10 is actually the blue one but if this is the case I don't have continuity from the ECU to that connector 
So, unless I'm looking at something wrong here, but I don't believe that I've got what I need uh, in that case. And I don't really like that because that's going to be much harder to splice a wire into. And it might require me to cut into the ECU connectors. And I'm really not happy about that. I, don't, I do not want to do that whatsoever. So, yeah, that's the last thing I want to do is to cut this side of the harness especially. Because this is what's hard, basically hardwired into the car. It's replaceable, obviously, but it's it's in the car. The other one is kind of the engine harness. You could actually replace that if you wanted to, but this is the kind of stuff that really is just like, man, I like electrical work on cars, but this this is the part I don't like about it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure that I'm looking at the right I'm looking at the right pin here. And then I do have a good connection with it because I just need to double check everything here and make sure I'm not not way off base on this one. Well, that's a little bit of a relief actually. So if you look at this, it's going to be a little bit tricky to see, but if you look in here, you see where that, you see where that, uh, paper clips going it's actually going to pin number four or b7 so there's your problem lady i went to the solid green wire whatever that is i need to be in the next one over this will be a sigh of relief if i get continuity i have a big wire for the the hole in the connector here this is what i should have done the first time Come on, there we go. I should be making contact. Uh, I'm actually curious what I was probing. It was four volts or so, 4.5. That's some sort of, uh, I mean, it's some kind of five volt reference connector or a component. What would that be? What's B7? nothing according to this but I don't believe that for a second it says it's a green what's a solid green hmm hmm is a villager on Minecraft would say all right so now I did not I was not successful in beating the rain so I'm getting some rain so let's jump out here real quick see if I got continuity Actually, I can check and see if I got battery voltage with the engine running since that's the original test but I've got a meter hooked up here looking at my battery voltage which is still low but like I said AGM batteries they'll they'll read low and still work apparently so we're looking at this pin right here the white with yellow the one on the right so let's go ahead and probe that and there's not really any current being carried through this wire so 0.3 is okay i mean that's about as close to zero as you're going to get honestly with these old connectors so that is good i'm going to crank it up and we're going to check the voltage to see what if we're getting battery voltage out of it and then we'll go from there let's see you have to push the clutch It's waning. Oh, I should probably connect that again. The, uh, the big connector is kind of important for it to run. I'm like, uh-oh, I broke it. The rain's starting to come down. Runs so nice. You can hear that poor alternator whirring because it's drawing it down.
Alright. It's coming up to like 12, 6 ish, so it is kind of charging the battery. So I can run it all day, no problem. That's a weird number. Why am I only getting four volts there? Hmm. You hear how the alternator shut off? You hear that whining noise go away? go back to let's make sure I'm looking at the right wire yeah Getting nothing. Huh. We didn't get nothing. So now, since I know that that is the big wire, I'm going to go ahead, shut the engine off, and check continuity between this pin and the other pin over there. It's probably going to be broken between them, from what I can tell. Continuity. I'm trying to hurry here because it's raining on me. It's actually not a whole lot of fun. But I'll have a good idea of what I'm looking at here. Mm, let me get that. <sighs> Alright, so let's back probe this one carefully. really need my T-pins. Actually, it'll probably be easier to back probe the one without rubber in it. Oh, there is rubber in this one, too. Well, we're just going to have to uh, front probe the other one with a paper clip. The reason I don't just jam the test lead in there is because that's going to ruin the connector if I did that. It would be really bad. There it goes. All right, so that's front probed. So now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this connector again. And I'm gonna set the camera down where you can see the meter. Maybe. 
take you with him. So, hopefully, actually, if I didn't get continuity on here, that'd be really weird. There we go, now you can see it. Make sure I'm still connected. That one. Oh, we do have continuity. Well, that's really weird. Hmm. So, that's really strange. I should be seeing that four volts or whatever it is. Wow, that is really weird. crank this up again and see if maybe I wasn't getting a good connection. Here's what you have to be repetitive and keep checking your connections because you might not have a good one. Try it again. Still nothing. In one bolt, what's that? Well, they did say hook negative up to the... Get nothing. I've already checked for an open circuit and white yellow wire from voltage regulator, so now I'm wondering about this computer. That's not good. Now I might have to go get that other ECU to see what's up. Check this one more time. change anything so now I'm not entirely sure what I'm up against I mean, it could just be the alternator flat out but I'm not getting the readings from that B5 pin that I'm supposed to according to the factory uh, diagnostics you know flow flow chart kind of deal it's not not really lining up with their their way of telling me how to diagnose it so this is the first time I've driven this car on the stock tune in a long time. Uh, it's probably been a, a year and a half or something since this thing's been a stock tune. I'm going to see how it does. Yeah, something stuck in my brakes. A little piece of rust or something from sitting up. It's kind of weird. 
It is raining today, so it's very likely the brakes are trying to rust up. That sounds terrible. I think something's rubbing the backing plate. I think it just came out. Anyway, so yeah, I'm driving this thing with the factory ECU in it. I'll get a check engine light for the O2 sensor because all that stuff's been changed. It's a narrow, it's a wide band setup that's it's actually tuned for open loop, so um, that's different. But the uh, yeah, my battery light's still on, and you still hear the alternator kind of whining, so I'm going to have to, like, find a way to check the entire circuit. I have an idea to check the whole circuit. It's just one wire. I just need to see from one end to the other. I have, a, this is going to sound kind of weird, I have a network toner, uh, which is basically, it checks like a loop back for networking. I'm going to see if there's a way to adapt that to to see if it's, you know, got continuity. I just need to see power from one end to the other. I don't have enough uh, multimeter leads to reach all the way from one end to the other, though. So, this doesn't really, I don't know. I need to drive it hard to figure out if this is actually that much different or not. I never did, like, a side-by-side -side comparison of my street tune to the factory tune, but I know I added a bunch of timing up top and took a bunch of fuel out because it was really rich and added fuel in the bottom, so uh, for whatever it's worth, that's what I did. But that's neither here nor there. That's a different video altogether, but so I'm going to go, I'm going to get back to the house and figure out what I'm going to do about uh, checking continuity, checking the integrity of that wire going from to the alternator C terminal and then because the rain's kind of let up a little bit that's the reason I'm kind of jumping back into it because I got to get this done yeah there goes a the check engine light uh, I got to get this done because I mean I just want to be able to drive the car and make sure everything's good on it before I go driving at 700 miles one way so but uh I mean everything is pretty good on it but I just this charging system issue is really the main main problem right now so but I will uh, I'm gonna go get that test kit out when I get back to the house and, and uh, I'll do a quick pull here So 
charging voltage or the uh, battery voltage was when it was sitting so that could just be because it's not charging properly but I haven't tested this battery either so that's another variable I need to consider is that the battery's got like a bad cell or a weak cell in it so um, yeah so I'm pulling up now and I'm gonna go ahead and jump cut again we're gonna jump cut again and I'm gonna see if that test kit I have has like a breakout kind of like alligator leads I think it has something in there for like individual wires and we'll see if that internal battery on that thing is even even okay I'll probably have to run the inverter out here to plug it in to the charger while I'm using it so but I'll get back here in a second with it so see you in a bit all right so I wanted to jump back on here and talk a little bit about what I found out. Um, I'm obviously not working on the car right now, but I tried to see if I could get the network test stuff to work and it just wasn't really a viable option for testing. Um, I did take the car down to AutoZone, had them check it with their battery tester, and it said the battery was still good, so I just wanted to check that and make sure it was good. Um, um, I haven't been able to check, you know, all the way from one end all the way to the other, like from the computer to the alternator, but I was able to check one half at a time on the video that you've seen. So I'm about 99% sure that the wiring should be good. I think I'm going to pull the alternator off and take it down to the store and have them check it. And if it says it's good, then we know it's something else. If it says it's bad, then we at least need an alternator and it still could be something else along with it but we know we need an alternator so um, that's that's my that's my plan for the time being so I'm gonna take care of that and then I'll just see you guys in the next video it'll be a part two so you know what to do like comment subscribe let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you next time